without you having some active participation or, for that matter, someone that comes along in six months and says, I didn't elect that fellow to be the trustee of the North Carolina Free Society or the Pennsylvania Free Society as the state nation that then belongs to the United America uh, Free Society. Who appointed them? I mean, we can argue to the cows come home that that person needed to be there. Otherwise, without trustees, there is no trust. If there's no trust, there's no conveyance. If there's no conveyance, then we're getting nowhere. Well, the good news is one heaven from the very beginning said every man and woman living and deceased is a member ipso facto from the beginning to the end of time. That being the case, we can call upon the greatest of our spiritual members, men and women who have deceased, who we regard as either needing to reform themselves or who we regard as already reformed in the exemplary life they've led, to be the trustees, legitimate trustees of these trusts until such time that the flesh members are competent to act as trustees and to appoint themselves as trustees. And what that means in practical terms is that United America, for example, or United Canada, for example, or United Britain, for example, or United Aotearoa, or United Australia can have all the positions at the highest levels appointed as members, but as spiritual members, members that cannot be usurped by temporal forces on this plane, that cannot be taken over, that can be held to account, absolutely. There is the court of one heaven. If you can't hold a trustee to account, then the trust collapses. So every trustee can be held accountable and is held accountable. But it gives us time, not a lot of time, but gives us time to organise at a state by state, province by province level, where all of you, once you've established your own competence, start to build up your own communities and start to take control of your own aggregate trusts for which the property is conveyed. Now, it's an ambitious program. It's a challenging program. But I believe every day it shows itself to be a divinely inspired program. Now, of course, you'll hear differing opinions. <clears throat> now, when we talk about the Khazars and the Venetians, and we talk about men and women of that, we are talking in many cases about mental illness. And mental illness is not simply restricted to people who were born into the Ghazarian Venetian parasites. Mental illness affects us all. I mean, I, I write about this concept of Messiah syndrome. You know, there were a number of people who had performed exemplary roles, who um, felt terribly upset and felt quite destructive towards the idea, purely on allowing their egos to dictate how they felt. So mental illness is a, is a challenge that you will see in many people who say, what, why should I believe this? Um, but at the end of the day, the promise is one nation under God. No one stands between you and the divine. No one should stand between you and the divine unless you elect them to that role, unless they deserve and are competent to that role. So in that, we are building the resources up for each of these trusts, we're working on the conveyance documents, we're working on who will be appointed and who best can assist you in terms of the spiritual members. And I look forward to working with groups of you in uh, building up your local competency and your local representation. And if we want to talk about what can happen after that, once there is, for example, state by state, nation state by nation state representation in a place, for example, such as United America, then there is the ability to fulfill what have, many have started and, and tried to do in terms of the restoring of the true rights of the Republic. But it can be done without there being any risk of someone being appointed to a role that lets the power get to them, that suddenly finds that mental illness 
uh, causes them to go off the rails. So I've covered a lot again tonight. I thank you and I look forward to answering your questions now. Thanks very much. Hi. I can hear you. All right. Hey, Frank. Hi. Uh, are you hearing an echo right now? Yep. So we've got some questions. Yeah, let me see. I've got one here in the chat. Um, Frank, will you please explain the entire process to get an EIN to open a special deposit account, including a completed sample SS4? Form. Now, real quick, Frank, before you answer that, I just want to remind everyone who's uh, called in, if you'll press star 8 on your phone and uh, get in the question queue, I'll unmute you for your question on the phone line. And if you're uh, online, just type in your message and I'll try to get to all of the, all the uh, questions for Frank. So, uh, do you need me to repeat that one? That's the SS4 process? No, no, I've, I've okay. got that. That's excellent. Okay, um, on the list of sections there on the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll from the home page of one-heaven.org, you will see that there is a section there that talks about trust registration. So if you click on that link, trust registration, you will see that it explains uh, in the second section registration of trust within Roman system and it links gives you a download link to an EIN SS4 application so if you download that EIN SS4 application it gives you an actual example of a EIN SS4 filled in now I know that there's been a number of questions from from a number of you some saying I couldn't do it online because I didn't I didn't put in an SSN number uh, I am going to add to that section. I ask the caller to look at that and if they don't understand the form or they have a trouble, trouble sending the form or there is some other question that it's not apparent how to deal with it, I will gladly improve the section there with the appropriate information. But I think that's the best answer I can give you is to go and see what's there and then please let me know if it does not make sense. Okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Frank. Uh, next question. Uh, do you have anything to say or add about the Israeli Supreme Court, uh, in particular, these three floors of books? Uh, about the ex-president convicting him here of, of, uh, of uh, counts of rape? Uh, lost you, Terry. The, uh, um, oh, there you go. Uh, yep, far away. If you had anything to say about the Israeli Supreme Court or anything that you could um, expand on regarding the Israeli Supreme Court, and in particular, the three floors of books, levels of three floors of books. The three, the three levels within the yes. Israeli Supreme Court? Yes. Um, okay, I'm, I am not I'm not familiar with the specific operation of the Israeli Supreme Court. So that's the first thing I want to say. I'm not familiar with the procedures or whether there are some peculiarities within the Israeli Supreme Court compared to other courts. So with that, uh, anything I'm referring to in terms of courts and forms of law, I would presume hold true also in Israel as it would hold true anywhere else. Um, as to specific things there, what I ask that um, caller to do is please send me an email or, uh, in fact, that's probably easier, send me an email with the information and, uh, or even post it on uh, university.ukadia.info and, and let's see if we can research it up and, and, and come back with an answer. But other than other than the general comments I've made on court, other than the general comments that are made um, across the sites, I have to take that on notice and come back to that particular caller and, and give an answer. 
Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, real quick, could you expand a little bit on the special deposit uh, account, uh, how that's uh, important for um, setting up the trust account? Absolutely. Yeah, just real quick, there's, there's lots of tricks that they do, and, and, you, and you all know this. And, and one of the tricks is this concept of deposit versus special deposit. Deposit is a conveyance. You think when you deposit something, you're putting it into your account. You're not. What you're doing is you're actually conveying ownership of the property to the bank, and then the bank is then giving the money back to you as a benefit. Now, they don't have to give the money back to you, and it's why banks can say, uh, we have the right for 14 days before you can receive money back, because in reality, it's now a benefit. So the thing about a deposit is if you set up an account, a standard deposit account, anything you put into that account ultimately is owned by the bank and they can refuse to give it to you. But when you set up a special deposit account, it's called special because it does not operate in that fashion. It is primarily used so that anything placed in it is administered by the bank but is still owned by you there is no conveyance and these bank accounts are normally allocated by the central bank of the country in conjunction with the bank for international settlement so that's the significance of a special deposit account and the other additional thing about a special deposit account is that once something has been deposited into a special deposit account no alphabet agency in a nation can then take it away from you. And you all know what happens with the IRS, how they go in and apply liens on people's accounts every day of the week. Well, a special deposit, particularly when it's set up for one of, for one of you using your trust number, means that no tax collection agency can at all put a lien on that account. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. All right, I have guest 30 with a question. Uh, go ahead, guest 30. Hi. Can you hear us? Hello, guest 30. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, how are you going? Hey, how are you doing today? I have a couple Good. of questions, if you don't mind. Um, sure. On, on the um, deed of ecclesiastical dishonor, um, do we had, uh, address that? for the, um, the county clerk, or it says the clerk of the courts. Is that the court you're dealing with, the clerk, or the county clerk? Uh, it doesn't matter. So long as you're addressing it to the executives and administrators at the um, clerk of the courts, wherever the, the, the courthouse is, it's perfectly fine. Okay. And um, on the bill, do we uh, fix that with the deed of ecclesiastical dishonor, or do we send them to just together in the same envelope? I, I, you can send it in the same envelope, absolutely. Okay, so they don't need to be affixed to one another? No. Okay. And also, um, would it be better to handwrite the deed, Paul, than to, type, to have it printed out? Wouldn't it show more force and effect being handwritten? No, it, it, Handwriting has no effect. What what has the effect? What gives the effect to the deed poll, to any deed, is its form, is the coloured paper it's on, is the thumbprint in blood, is the entire conforming to exactly what's done there. Handwriting has no material improvement on it. Okay, and uh, care of on the deed poll. That would be to the particular courtroom which with your dealing you would address it to yeah i mean you, you if you if if you're dealing with a matter at a particular county courthouse, then that's the address you're going to, and you only start to raise it up the level once the dishonor process is completed, and you're now going after the state attorney general to seize the bond and and perform. So until you've reached that point, which is the fourth fourth deed, and by the way, I've got to get that up on the site. I don't have the what's called a distress warrant up there in the forms, and I will have it there with the fourth deed. But uh, if you're dealing with a local county courthouse, then that's the address you're dealing with, okay? 
Great. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. 